Hi there, my name is Kevin Lay from Wildlife Computers and today we're going to go over the process for anti-fouling marine tags. This is some of the equipment that we're going to need, some of the tools, we're going to need things like a hammer, some punches, that's to make it easy, uh, we need a screwdriver for opening our paint tins, a uh, sharpie pen, we'll also need some masking tape and a magnet that's supplied with the tags. The product we're going to use is Micron 66, but any of the Micron paints are okay. The only thing about Micron 66 is it's only for salt water. This is also the primer that we'll use, the International Paints Interprotect Primer. There is part A and part B. It's an epoxy primer, so we need to mix those together as well. We'll also need some isopropyl alcohol or acetone, some gloves, and some cleaning rag. During this process we need to take the tags off. So I suggest that you get your sharpie pen and on the bottom of the tag, on the peel ply material, write the tag serial number 17U0124 and ID number. So the first thing we need to do is mask the areas of the tag that we don't want to paint. These include in the spot tag the wet dry sensors, typically there's two, sometimes there's three, and also the communications port. The other thing we want to do is leave a little viewing area so we can see that LED when it flashes. For example, in this tag, if we apply the magnet, you can see the LED flashing there. So what I'm going to do is get my Sharpie and just put a little dot there. So I will make up a, a masking sticker to go over that area. This is a Fastlock Mark 10 splash tag. This tag also has a pressure sensor port. You can see the hole there. We need to cover that as well as the one, two, three wet dry sensors. The LED in these tags is right there so we need to put a small dot there so we can still view the LED and the last thing is the dangerous goods switch this tag has already had the dangerous goods screw inserted normally unless you're at the deployment site the screw will be removed regardless we need to also cover that with masking tape as we do not want anti-fouling paint or primer on that area now we need to prepare the tags before we paint them we need some masking tape and I actually like uh, using some punches onto a piece of wood so we can prepare the uh, discs of masking tape that we will stick over the wet dry sensors. Oops. <laughs> and we want some smaller ones to go over the LED position. And a couple more. Right. So we take our tag using tweezers or a knife. You can remove the disc of masking tape and position it over the wet dry sensors. On this particular spot tag, the wet dry sensors are different sizes because this tag has a uniquely raised wet dry sensor to give better operation for sea turtle work. The other thing we need to do is I've put the rubber plug in for the communications port. We need to use a knife and cut. A strip to go over the communications connector because we don't really want paint on that. Just like so. Now the one thing we haven't covered yet is the viewing port for the LED which we marked previously which is right there. 
So this tag has all the masking done and ready to go. With a splash tag, we have additional sensors such as the pressure port, which is this hole here. So we need to cover that as well. Oh, that one doesn't want to come off. Maybe this one will. To cover the pressure port because we don't want paint getting in, interfering with the pressure sensor. We'll cover the communications connector. And again, we marked where the LED will be viewed, which is right there. The other ones that need covering are the three wet dry sensors. You can cut out tape by hand using scissors. I just find this method is much quicker and easier. Now on these tags, we also need to cover the battery isolator screw as mentioned earlier. So double checking, this tag has been sand cleaned with alcohol we've masked it we've only handled it with gloves since it's been cleaned with alcohol so it's ready to paint same with the spot tag no pressure sensor or battery isolator screw in this tag to cover but we've covered the two wet dry sensors and the LED viewing port and the communications connector so this is also ready to paint here we have our spot tag we've marked the uh, serial number and ID number on the bottom. The next step is to clean the tag. It's quite important to give the tag a good sanding before you apply the primer. This is because epoxies and polyurethanes all oxidize over time and oxidation does not support good bonding of paint or additional epoxy. You can sand the wet dry sensors, particularly copper ones. Stainless steel ones are a bit harder. If you have a, a fast lock GPS tag, such as this tag that has already been sanded and cleaned, you should sand, carefully sand the top of the GPS antenna. I say carefully because you want to make sure that the whole area is sanded and none of it is missed. Okay, the next step is to get a nice clean rag, some isopropyl alcohol or acetone, and give the tag a good clean. Once we have the tags prepared, the next step is to prepare the primer. As mentioned, the primer is an International Paints product. It's a two-part epoxy primer, which is why it sticks really well, because it is an epoxy. You will we'll need to stir just the part A, because it settles a bit in the bottom. So I'll give that a good stir for about a minute or so. I've already stirred this previously, so that's all good. Harden doesn't need it. So we need a suitable mixing cup. The quantity of the mix is three parts of part A to one part of part B. So for what we're doing here, I will do 50 mils. Syringes are always useful. So this is our three parts of part A. And of course using a different syringe we will get five mils of part B, so that's our three to one ratio. And use a stick or something suitable to mix that. You need to mix this for a good 30 seconds, maybe even a minute making sure there's no bits that are left on the side unmixed and once you've mixed it we need to leave it for about 10 minutes to start to cure so 
so the epoxy and the paint will start to cure uh, after 10 minutes it should be just ready to start applying to the tags so that's the primer mixed up now we're ready to paint our tags 10 minutes has passed since we first mixed up the part A and B of the primer we'll give it a, another stir and now it's ready to paint onto the tags it's not a Picasso job, it's not that critical um, how careful you are with the painting but just make sure you cover the entire area one thing you do want to avoid is paint pooling in certain areas for example if I put that on there see in the um, bottom of the um, that crevasse there the paint will pull and what that does is it means it's thicker and it takes longer to dry and we want it all to dry at the same time the critical thing that I'll repeat several times is that we must get the first coat of Micron 66 on while this primer is still tacky and by tacky I don't mean wet by tacky I mean that you can put your thumb on it and it will leave a slight thumbprint with a glove but it will still pull away and the paint won't stick to your glove now we'll do the splash tag so you can paint around the fast response thermistor in the in the crevasse there in the recess the critical area to protect in these tags or in any tag is the area between the wet dry sensors that's the area that we want to avoid getting fouled because the biofouling will cause the tag to think that it's wet when it's actually dry because the algae will retain the water when the tag comes out of the water and of course if it thinks it's wet it's not going to transmit when the animal surfaces here we have the Micron 66 paint with Micron 66 it needs to be stirred really well because it has copper that settles into the bottom I've stirred this previously with an electric stirrer on a battery drill but um, you can do it by hand but you just need to make sure that there's no sludge at the bottom where all the copper is so. I've just checked our tags and the primer is currently tacky you can see it's sort of just it's not leaving any imprint on my gloves but it's still sticking to them so we're ready to go for the first coat of Micron so you can either work out of the big can or you can um, put it into a smaller container if you wish sometimes a smaller container is better because uh, the, sometimes a film builds up on the top of the paint which is not ideal now this coat is quite thick and in fact we're going to put three coats on allowing about six hours between coats this is an ablative anti-fouling paint which means that over time and movement through the water the paint will actually wear off exposing new copper molecules and biocide to keep barnacles and biofouling away Micron is quite toxic so you do need to have, take some precautions such as gloves we're working in a well ventilated area outside you could do this in a fume cabinet if you happen to have one at your institution you literally can't have too many coats of Micron finally once you've taken the uh, taken the masking tape off all the sensors etc and uh, dangerous goods switch you should uh, store the tags in a plastic ziplock bag again just because the uh, Micron 66 is considered toxic 
and certainly should only handle tags with gloves. And that is how you anti-foul wildlife computers tags.